Edsel, from your studies in consciousness, particularly uh, altered states of consciousness, also parapsychology, what insights that gives, what can you say about uh, where consciousness exists in the animal kingdom? Uh, we know it exists in humans. Most people think it's fully there in primates. We all have, uh, if we have a, a pet, uh, dogs, we know that their consciousness, they have an olfactory sense of consciousness more than we do. Uh, so w how far down does it go? And w w what kind of analysis can you bring us in terms of the methods we would use to discern consciousness at different uh, levels of the biological hierarchy? Yes. Uh, let me start with a caveat, which is that I'm not a biologist. Mm. I am very interested in the topic, but I read books about it as an interested layperson, not as an expert. But you are an expert in consciousness. In, 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 in states, states of consciousness. Yes, okay. One thing that I might say is, if we're talking about alternate states as providing us different perspectives, talking about human consciousness, then that possibility just extends dramatically when we talk about other species, yeah. who may have very different capabilities. As you mentioned, dogs, mostly olfactory. Uh, hearing is much better in other species, notions of uh, electromagnetism and so on. Uh, one thing that I do in my courses, I mentioned the very famous video of the unicellular uh, sponge-like that is able to find its way through a maze faster than you or I or mm -hmm. my students can mm -hmm. do. And I say, well, what do we make out of this? This creature has no central nervous system, no brain, and is showing what looks like intelligent behavior, intelligent, flexible behavior. Since that, in the last few years, with work by, I think his name is Conde in Spain and a few other people, and Marilyn Sheldrake, we are also starting to learn that there is some kind of communication among plants. Now, they seem to be to show some flexibility, responsiveness to when they are being attacked, some type of chemical communication. Does this mean that they have consciousness a la human being? That they reflect and say to be or not to be mm -hmm. a plant? <laughs> uh, I would doubt it because they are coming from a very different parting view, not necessarily a worse perspective, but a very different one. One recent series of studies that has shown, for example, that plants can be conditioned, as in learning, as animals are, just is showing more and more that there seems to be a greater, at least, set type of awareness. Okay? Not the same as human beings, reflective conscious awareness, although we do not know for sure, but I would imagine we know that we have a greater sense of fatality, that we are transient beings, that we're going to die, blah, 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 all of that. Uh, and maybe other creatures do not have, do not seem to have that as much. I can speak of my cats, uh, some of the cats I have had, when their time came to die, they, too, they seem to take it, at least behaviorally from how, what I could interpret it, in a far more simpler way than I think humans do. <laughs> they do not seem to get anxious, it was like, Okay, now I just lie down, it's my time to go, and they go. Mm. Uh, and it brings us to perhaps one of the physical, uh, the, sorry, philosophical perspectives that we have. Typically in materialism, the notion has been that we had no consciousness until we ended up having, for example, mammals or maybe birds and mammals that show greater capability to learn, that show discrimination, awareness, perhaps even self-consciousness. They seem to discriminate between themselves and others. But now, more and more, the border is going backwards and backwards and backwards in phylogeny. So I think, in a materialist perspective, the notion has been, well, we had no consciousness, and suddenly it starts to show up. Another perspective, the more, if you will, pantheist perspective, is that whatever we con matter is, that it is somehow also related to some type of awareness. Now, the awareness of an atom may not be the same as the awareness of my looking at you blinking, <laughs> but it may be some type of sense that something has happened, something has changed, and that some reaction needs to happen. Now, how far do we go? We do not know. It seems that right now, at least, we are able to make a case, or some of the experts are able to make a case for plants. Not everyone agrees, but some 
reasonable, very informed, intelligent people can make that case. So how do we differentiate between uh, homeostatic reactions to the environment? Because single cell um, amoeba, and para para paramecium, bacteria, they all have an interaction with the environment in, in one way or, or the other. And so, I mean, that you could define that as a proto-consciousness, but that seems like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the lowest common denominator, and therefore you can say consciousness is, is, is everything in the living world, because living, by definition, is interacting with the environment. So if you start blurring the bound definition of consciousness, interacting with the environment, then everything that's alive is conscious. But then I think what you do is to look at other perspectives and not only at homeostasis. You look, for instance, at the possibility of learning, as has been shown in plants, that yeah. they can be conditioned. Uh, you look at flexibility of behavioral responses, uh, as you look at the uh, one cell creature that is able to find its way through the maze, and you make a case. Now, there may be some critics that can refute with better arguments. I have no problem with that, but then you keep on looking and seeing how far this goes. What I would tell you is that some years ago, that question wasn't even asked. Mm. I have been a vegetarian for decades. Mm -hmm. And to me, the notion has been very obvious that all kinds of creatures, that fish felt pain, that I did not want to participate in enhancing already the vast amount of pain that exists in the world. And so I decided not to eat them if they had been sacrificed or killed for mm. that. Right now I'm having a problem because if plants are also somehow conscious <laughs> and I'm thinking... Your diet is going to be very limited. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, I still think there may be some difference in level, quality or type, maybe a better way, a less biased way of putting it. Mm. But I think the need, uh, the question needs to be asked the research needs to be done, and that has only started being done very recently. And what seems to be found more and more is that there's some kind of consistent tale there. Where we will be in 20 years, I do not know, but it may be that that border has gone even farther back in evolutionary history, and I would not be surprised if that is the case. So does that mean a blurring of the boundary between what consciousness is and what life is itself? I would say so. Uh, yes, and it may be that somehow, in some way, the universe made life and consciousness be, be a two-for-all, <laughs> made a sale. <laughs> Buy one, get two. 